want to say that without you, we are hopeless. We are without cause and without purpose. God, would you look at us, would those who see us know that we are all about you. We are all about you because you are worthy. You are worth it all, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Abby, and I serve Riverwood as the graphic designer. It's my job to create visuals for all of our ministries and events, manage the website and app, and once a month work with our production team and pastors to come up with a series graphic. It's about more than the look. It needs to communicate the core essence of the message. So this month, as I began to reflect and brainstorm about what I would create, everything pointed me towards an anatomical heart. It is an intricate and extremely important part of our circulatory system and serves the whole body, just as our spiritual heart is an intricate and extremely important part of who we are as children of God. So I started to draw, 
and I thought of how our hearts are always shifting and being re-examined and there's layers and there's depth to it. So I added layers and I added depth to the graphic illustration. But all of that is there to support and strengthen the message. So what is the message this month? Well, last weekend, Todd launched our new series, The Heart of the Matter. He taught us that the heart is the part of us that God is most interested in. The Bible actually uses the word heart close to 600 times, but seldom referring to the hollow four-chamber muscle in the center of our chest. However, when the Bible speaks of our heart, it's pointing out the spiritual center that pumps life into our emotions, our intellect, character, decisions, our priorities, relationships, and soul. So last weekend, we took 12 EKG leads, connected them to the Bible, and put the sticky pads on our hearts, and began assessing whether our hearts are strong and healthy, or if there might be some hidden defects or diseases. EKG lead number one was proximity. God says through the prophet of Isaiah that God's people were going through the motions, but their hearts were far from God, and we looked at what it means to be truly in love with God. EKG lead number two was truthfulness, and was asking the questions, are we guilty of false advertising, or are our lives, choices, and actions in line with our words? EKG lead number three was vulnerability. A healthy heart confesses its sin, talks about its struggles, and even boasts in its weaknesses so the power of God may be made strong in them. And EKG lead number four was faith-filled, and we call this the confidence, that God has built bridges across the scary, perplexing, and difficult challenges of life, and trusting Him, even if we can't see the bridges from where you're standing today. So, those were the first four of 12 EKG leads we're going to discover. And here's Pastor Todd to teach out our second set of four EKG leads running from the Bible to our hearts. Thanks for that review, Abby. You know, you might be sitting there today thinking, I'm not convinced. I'm not sure how useful this study and monitoring of the heart actually is. I get it. Even the guy who invented the electric cardiogram had his doubts. In 1887, nobody knew exactly how the hollow muscle with its two parts and four chambers in the center of a person's chest actually worked. But there was this guy named Augustus Desire Waller who thought he might have an idea that Possibly it might have something to do with electrical activity. So Waller took an instrument designed to measure minute electrical charges and chemical reactions and strapped the electrodes to his chest and his back. And then he took his kid's toy train and he hooked it up so that it moved very slowly and recorded the heart's activity in real time, much like the paper that comes out of a modern EKG machine would. To Waller's amazement, he could see the rhythms and the beats of the heart on the plate carried by the toy train. Waller was right about the heart's electrical activity, but he was dead wrong about the importance of his discovery. In 1911, Waller, who invented the world's first EKG machine, said, I do not imagine that electrocardiography is likely to find any very extensive use in the hospital. It can, at most, be of rare and occasional use to afford a record of some rare anomaly of cardiac action. Just 13 years later, and hospitals were clamoring to get their hands on the EKG machine, making it an indispensable piece of hospital equipment. My warning to you is don't underestimate the power of this teaching. These EKG leads from the Bible are real, and they will help detect spiritual heart disease, a damaged heart, or a hidden and undiagnosed defect. Every one of these spiritual EKG leads is documented in God's Word, and they are there to ensure your heart the spiritual pump at the core of your life is healthy. So let's move on to EKG lead number five, boldness. This coming Tuesday, we're going to read Isaiah chapter 51 on our chapter a day reading adventure. It's a chapter all about having confidence in God, and it's a call to trust God with your whole heart. Here's what it says in verses seven and eight. Listen to me, you who know right from wrong, you who cherish my law in your hearts, do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insults. Now, let's take this passage apart to discover what makes it tick. Listen to me, you who know right from wrong, you who cherish my law in your hearts. Do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insult. God is saying, listen to me, those of you who have planted your feet on my laws and have planted my laws in your hearts. Now, right away, just hearing God set up this passage, we know we're heading towards some opposition. As soon as we start talking about right and wrong and God's laws, we're on a collision course with the world. 
But God is calling for his people to cherish or to treasure or to bury his laws in their hearts. The word for law here is literally Torah, which means God's instructions, God's directions, God's customs and manners. When we choose to build our life on the foundation of Jesus Christ, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. You know, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 says this, Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. So please don't lose heart because of the trials here. And then he goes on to pray this very powerful prayer, which is what I would like to pray for all of you today. Will you please pray with me? When I think of all of that, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. 
I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, and then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or even think. Amen. Church, we want to thank you for your generosity over the past year to ensure that the mission and the ministry at Riverwood continues. You know, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 9 emphasizes the idea that gift giving is really a matter of the heart. Our gifts must come from the heart, voluntarily, not reluctantly, or from a sense of compulsion, he says. So I want to thank you today for giving from the heart. And you can do so by going to the app, the website, or even stopping by the office anytime during the week. Our annual general meeting is tonight, online at 6.30 p.m. You'll be able to find the link in Tuar or your Covenant community email. Now, if you're not a part of the Covenant community, you are able to still join in you just aren't able to vote for the different things that we'll be talking about tonight. Also today, the Reveal survey opens up. It can be found on our website, on our app. It will be in Tuar this next week. And we would love everyone to participate, whether you've been a part of the community at Riverwood for years or you're brand new. We would love to have your perspective. Students, young adults, we would like you to participate as well. It's a 25 minute intensive 100 plus question survey. It'll be fully anonymous. And what it's to do is to really gain a sense of where people are at in their faith and what they and how they are pursuing faith. This will uh, be essentially um, like a giant EKG machine for not just your personal heart, but the heart of our church and how we are all really doing together. This survey will be open for two weeks and we would really encourage you to take part because it's gonna give some really great insight for us as pastors and leaders and on casting our vision for going forward and what we need to do. And now back to the second half of the next two EKG leads from the Bible about our hearts. Six strategically placed EKG leads placed on our hearts to measure how strong the electrical charges of God's spirit in us are. EKG lead number one, proximity, measuring how close we really are to God. EKG lead number two, truthfulness, measuring if there is any false advertising or disconnect between what we say about God and our actual life and actions and priorities. Lead number three, vulnerability, measuring how transparent we are as we embrace our weaknesses as an opportunity for God to showcase his power. Number four, faith-filled, measuring our dependency and trust that God will build bridges across the gaps in our lives. Number five, boldness, measuring our value for God's law and our solid footing on those laws. And number six, repentance, measuring how accurately we see God and in turn see ourselves in light of who God is. The more accurate we see him, the more willing we are to turn and pivot our lives towards him. And EKG lead number seven, and this one might take you by a bit of surprise, number seven is cheerful. Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is a good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. The ancient Hebrew word here for cheerful is samech. Sorry for any spit on the, on the inside of your TV there, but you can say it with me. It's got that guttural kind of uh, gurgly sound, samech. What it means is 
to rejoice, to celebrate, to stir up cheer. Those who stir up cheer and find much to celebrate in their hearts, being joyful and then rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing again and again, these people are good medicine. They bring relief, healing, and remedy to the hurting and the sad. But then God uses the opposite to explain what happens when the cheerful, celebrating, rejoicing hearts aren't working right. But a downcast spirit dries up the bones. Back in Isaiah 61, God is prophesying about Jesus in this famous passage, and he uses this term in verse 3. He will provide a crown of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of joy instead of mourning. The oil of joy, now I realize that historically in that context, it, it means the anointing oil, the oil poured over the head in times of celebration. But I know another use for oil, as a loosener and lubricator. Often when I'm working in my shop in an old lawnmower or car part, a bolt will stubbornly seize and get stuck. If I manage to get a wrench on it and turn it at all, it will squeal and complain and squawk out of resistance. But if I can get some oil into the cracks and crevices and threads and let the rusty metal piece soak in the oil for a while, before you know it, it begins to loosen up, stop its complaining and squawking and screeching and let go. God says in Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful, celebrating, rejoicing heart is a good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. I'll tell you something, there are a lot of downcast spirits drying up a lot of people around them these days. Our world is sick and in need of healing. There is so much complaining and worrying and squawking and screeching these days. And, and what it needs is a a bit of a small army of people armed with joy and cheer, finding every moment and every excuse to celebrate and rejoice to bring some medicine. And let me tell you where this needs to start. Right where you live, in your home, with your roommates, with your siblings, with your spouse and your family. The question couldn't be clearer. A cheerful heart is a good medicine, but downcast spirit dries up the bones which are you? Are you the medicine these days or are you the disease? Are you the treatment for people's worry and fear and grumpiness or are you a super spreader of more grumpiness, worry and fear? You know, sometimes the Bible is so ridiculously clear and simple. There is just no way to avoid it. This EKG lead is measuring whether you are more given to optimism and praise and joy, loosening up the rusty, corroded hearts around you or are you more of a corroding agent, a downcast spirit, sucking the life out of other people? So if you think you might have a heart problem that this EKG lead is revealing, here's my challenge to you. Find some moisturizing oil or lotion. Guys, I'm talking to you too. And if you're married, this is gonna have a twofold benefit because your wife has probably really been wanting you to use some of this stuff. And every day this week, maybe even a couple of times this week, put it on your hands and when you do, pray a prayer, Lord, Give me a cheerful heart. Help me to be the oil of joy, that I might be medicine to other people. Lord, give me a cheerful heart and make me the oil of joy for my spouse, for my coworkers, for my parents, for my siblings, for my kids, that I might be your medicine to them. Okay, let's take a look at the last EKG lead for today, lead number eight, which is clearly marked and attached to 1 Chronicles 28.9. And Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he'll reject you forever. This is one of nearly 600 verses in the ancient scriptures that provide a sober and powerful assessment tool for our hearts. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. EKG lead number eight is serving. You might remember when Satan was tempting Jesus in Luke chapter four. Satan took Jesus to a high place and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, Jesus, this could all be yours if you just worship me. And in that moment, Jesus reached back to Deuteronomy 6.13 and quoted this simple phrase 